again to another episode of how the hell did this go number one and I needed to make a change I needed to make a statement I was a little bit upset with my two co-hosts the lovely Andrea Tessman and the equally lovely Brad Nelson sure let's let's run with that because they kept picking good songs and I said what's the matter with these two I am going to respond with a shit sandwich wrapped in a turd on a platter of poo poo only not everyone thinks that this is crap. In fact, the first hate message I ever got was over this particular song. And this song is We Built This City. By On Star rock and roll. By Star Jeff. <laughs> and you see, there's a very, there's multiple reasons why this song has been called the worst by multiple publications not by myself i consider it the fourth worst song ever we've actually done the worst song ever which was disco duck in my opinion but with this particular song we have certain factors that you've got to look at and before we went on air brad mentioned something to me and i was going to bring that up so let's just talk about why a lot of people hate this song i think a lot of it is because of who's involved Yes, we're talking about Starship, but Starship was who before that? This, this, this well, is this is rhetorical. Someone's Jefferson Starship. Jefferson Starship. Before Jefferson before Starship. And then who was Jefferson Starship before? Jefferson, Jefferson Airplane. Jefferson Airplane. Right. So Jefferson Airplane in 1967 come out with two of the biggest kick-ass rock songs ever, defining a scene: "Somebody to Love" and uh, "White Rabbit." Two songs that we'll never really talk about in greater depth because they didn't go number one. They will, uh, I believe, was number five for both of them. I could be wrong on that, but they didn't go number one, nevertheless. Uh, these, this is one of the most important bands of that era. But what happened to them is as the 70s blood on and bands, band members left, they became a little bit more, well, actually a lot more commercial, but still putting out some decent music. I maintain that Miracles by Starship, Jefferson Starship, that is, is pretty damn good. I actually like Jane. I know they were making fun of it a lot in, the, in some way in Wet Hot American Summer. Don't matter, it's still decent. But as we got into the 80s and Paul Kantner finally left, we had, what did we have left? A cat we had box, Grace. apparently. We had style and we had grace. Rita Hayworth gave good face. Vogue. <laughs> We're gonna have to do a deep dive in Madonna. So I agree with Brad. No, 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 we don't. No, we don't. No, no, no. no. Okay, Brad, fine. you're latecomer to this. I think you can be outvoted. That's all. We don't like possible. Madonna though. Well, I'm fine. I'm. Well, we're fine with Vogue. 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 Okay. All right. Look at look at me having to put this train back on the track, and that's not my strength. <laughs> this isn't in my job description. No. No. So here's a song that ha sounds nothing like uh, like what they did in, in 1967. Not a goddamn thing. And I actually listened to that album again not that long ago. There is nothing similar with the exception of, of Grace Slick. And even then, it's barely the same person. Yeah, her voice wasn't the same as it was. And it wasn't as experimental, I guess. As, as it was with Jefferson Star or Jefferson Airplane, um, you know, the translation or transition to Starship. Mm -hmm. She was less, I don't know, experimental is the only word that I was able to come up with going back and looking over, you know, the, the catalog. Oh, you, White Rabbit was definitely experimental. Mm -hmm. um, we Built This City is trash. Pretty terrible early synth pop. They're completely different music. So I, I think, though, that's a big reason why a lot of people have an instant dislike to it, because yes, it's hard absolutely. to go from that A to the Z. And what the hell happened from 
in from LMNOP. Something something went terribly wrong here for this to for this to happen. And looking back, it's sort of as I was looking through the progression or de-evolution of this band, as I'd like to more refer to it, Grace is actually a big reason for this. Uh, she was the focal point, though not necessarily the creative focal point. She never was. She was this free spirit who looked good as in the front, was hot, but didn't think she was hot, which made her even hotter. And had an excellent voice. And had an excellent voice. Had a whole had a whole different rock and roll vibe. I was reading like interviews upon interviews that she did. So she was li living the rock and roll lifestyle as good as anyone. Uh, she was saying how she uh, slept with Jim Morrison, uh, above average size, but I guess but uh, I guess I wasn't a good lay in bed because uh, he never returned a call. <laughs> you know. It was, yeah, and I, I liked what she had to say about aging rock stars. She said, you know, after 50, you just look silly. You know, you, you, she said you could do the blues or country or jazz or whatever till you're 150. And I'm totally paraphrasing her quote here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after you, you can't do rock and roll after 50. And Aerosmith never got that message. Uh, the a Rolling lot Stones, they, they, they just ignored it. Well, at some point, then you become your own parody. Or, or your own cover act, which I, I've heard some band, like older bands sort of refer to themselves as. Like Bowie said he never wanted to be that. And he never mm -hmm. did. Bowie is that exception, not the rule. Uh, incidentally. Well, Bowie kept reinventing himself. I mean, every time he got bored, he became somebody, somebody else. Sure. But I mean, like when it sort of, it didn't really quite work into the 2000s. He just sort of like stepped back a bit, did a couple of his own things. Uh, put out some of the best work right when he was dying but that that's not neither here nor there uh, so but grace slick was 41 when this came out no, at the time older they, than that was she i was i know she was the oldest female to ever have a number one pop song but i'm pretty sure she was only in her early 40s okay, I, I thought she was 41 i, I thought she was 44 and then she broke her own record when starship had another number one hit with yeah, Sarah, or no, nothing's gonna stop us now, right? From mannequin, yes, yes, where uh, guy gets wood for wood that really didn't work on the tag. Come on, which one of us hasn't that happened to? Raise your hand right here. I, I have never oh, okay. been attracted to a mannequin, I can honestly tell you that. Well, I guess they were right then. I have to stop treating objects like women. <laughs> that's all, that's all. well done well done in reading in reading more of the stuff so the Kantner at this point Paul Kantner who stuck around till 83 okay pretty much had enough because he felt it got too commercial it was already commercial for a long time but it, it reached the point where he said like screw it I can't do this anymore uh, Grace Slick had been in and out or really out because did you hear, read what she did in Germany? No, that one I didn't get to. What All happened right. there? So she was kicked out of the band because Grace Slick, by her own admission, was a massive drunk. And she uh, was uh, kicked out of Jefferson Airplane. And yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. And then, okay, so ended up, but then she was back with them as Jefferson Starship, uh, got kicked out because she was so drunk. Uh, on stage, uh, she, this was in Germany. She was she was saying like, "Hey, who won the war?" Oh, and then did a Heil Hitler. Oh, and according to her, she says she had she was actually talked out of uh, wearing full uh, Nazi uniform. Oh um, man, or like a Heidi thing that she saw. I, I don't quite know which one it was. I know but. she did come out in a burka at one point in time. Removed that, and then it showed, a, it had, a, there was something on there that said, fuck fear. Mm, I think that was more recently, though. Uh, yeah, it was, it was after Jefferson Starship. It was, yeah. it, it was after Starship, too, I think. But I, again, I, I think I've I, read I think so right. much about these guys. Um, what got me about this song, if I can put the train back on the tracks about well, this song. Right, but, but, I was going, but yeah, before there, because so, there was just one thing going back with, with Grace. She came back 
And then there's quote after quote where she just said, okay, I hate everything about this, but I'm just, I'm sober now and I'm just going to be the good little girl. I owe them that and I'll just take the money. Hmm. But yeah, go, now. The show must go on. Okay. Or less. So train goes back on the tracks and it blew my mind that Topin wrote this song, Bernie Topin of Elton yeah. John fame. I wish I could have found the original demo. I couldn't because the, the method, uh, the, point behind this initially was really about how there wasn't a whole lot of places to play and commercialism had taken over I guess the feeding grounds of of music like the actual clubs and whatnot so that was his point his take um, that was the original demo from it uh, obviously what we got they just it, it became it became ironic in a way that is actually ironic and not um, ironic. not Alanis ironic because right. this song became so overproduced and over engineered to the point that they literally hired an MTV exec to be on it. He was a um, DJ radio voice looking out right. over that Golden Gate Bridge. Yep, and it was just so it's got these. The lyrics seem nonsensical in listening to the song as it is, but if you think of it in a bit of an anti-establishment song, it actually makes a bit more sense. And that's what Topin was going for when he yeah. first created that's it. That's not how it was it ended. going to be the idea of it being a It's not song. how it ended. No, this this song was it started off as a, and I don't want to say protest song because honestly, since the sixties maybe 70s, there hasn't, haven't been any great protest songs, but it was a, a poke in the eye at the establishment at the time. Or, or so they, they looked at it just from, though also to a very privileged point of view. Mm -hmm. you know, so, okay, so here's some lyrics. Um, you know, let's go please, through the shit storm. I'm not going to I'm not going to read all of them, but just a couple. It's just another Sunday in a tired old street. Police have got the chokehold. Oh, and we just lost the beat. So they're talking about police brutality. They're talking about corporate consolidation in someone's always playing corporation games. Who cares? There's always changing corporation names. Like, look at fucking Facebook is now meta like. Sure, but we're, we're giving them too much credit as to what it came because it just Grace is oh no, I'm just saying that. what it was intended right. to be. Right, but then what? Then we also have knee deep in the hoopla. What the fuck does that mean? Or how about riding the mamba? Is it riding the mamba? It's um. When Marconi plays the mamba. Listen to the radio. Barty, yeah, Barco Marconi plays the mamba. Probably meant mambo, but they just decided mamba fit better, and they went with it. So, it, it definitely was deviated a lot from mistake. where Topin had plans on it going and <laughs> unfortunately became what it became, which, and, and Kirk, we were talking about this previously, if you pretend that Jefferson Airplane doesn't exist, it's a perfectly acceptable pop song in, in the 80s. No, it's still a shitty pop song. It's well, still a shitty pop millions song. of other people disagree. Well, they're wrong. Yeah, of course they are. And I, and I, I said so, so, so. It, is, it has made the top of the worst pop songs ever list multiple times for multiple institutions. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's that terrible. It's not even the worst Billboard number one. I know that Kirk thinks that's Disco Duck. I mm -hmm. personally think it's more along the lines of... Um, have my baby. Yeah, that one's pretty nasty. That, I, I, I that one's the, worse than Disco Duck and the Ballad of the Green Berets. Or, all of which we've you know, covered. Which we've oh. we've also we've covered all three of these, right. but okay, these are so, terrible songs. They are all worse. All right, so let me take this then, as, as a vacuum then, um, with, with forgetting that Grace is the one who gave us some kick-ass tunes, right? So let's let's take take her out take that out of the equation when you talk about we built the city we built the city on rock and roll and your song's not very rock and roll i got a problem but, with that. i mean they were in san francisco right and that city is basically built on the rocking and rolling of the san andreas fault that's a stretch 
Yeah, it, it, it like there's works. perpetual earthquakes going on. They're rocking and rolling on a daily basis. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Stretch arms. It's a long walk to get that there, but I see how you made the journey. All right. Here's a, here's uh, a quote from thanks Grace. Thanks for walking Slick. with me. May I give a quote from Grace Slick herself? Yes. We built the city on rock and roll. There isn't any city built on rock and roll. If you're talking about L.A., that's built on oranges and oil in the movie industry. San Francisco, that's built on gold and trade. New York, that's been around way longer than rock and roll. Bernie wrote a, these songs about clubs closing in L.A. But clubs are not going to close forever in a city like L.A., so it was a pretty stupid song. And everybody thought that we were bragging about San Francisco, and we weren't. We had three songs that went number one in the 80s. I didn't believe the lyrics of any of them. Grace, if you're watching, come on the highest rated show ever done by a drunken Canadian with occasional sidekicks. Might be true. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm not an occasional sidekick. I have no co-hosts. Okay. Well, the, um, the idea though, I mean, yeah, Grace might not have liked what she was doing, but she was doing it. She was cashing the checks. It's not as if she was you know, just there out of, you know, some sense of altruism where she was donating all of her proceeds to muscular dystrophy or something like that. Guilt. Let's be honest here. She sold out. She maybe didn't like the fact that she sold out and she railed against it. But the fact she is, just she, a paycheck. Took, she took the checks. She did the work. Go on, take the money and run. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. So, you know, you, you can you can rail against the machine or rage against the machine if you wish, but it makes it a little hypocritical when you're also going, thank you for the money machine. That's also true. And I'm sure she I'm sure she enjoys her, her life now doing whatever the hell she wants. And she says, like, I can't believe I'm still alive. And she is. Oh, yeah. And that's awesome. That, that, that is absolutely awesome. Uh, I. I'll say just for me personally, I hated the song when this came out and when I would have been 13, hated it then, hate it now. Uh, thought that it was used way too much. Maybe it was also oversaturated because that was- That's probably a big part of it. Mm -hmm. It was played everywhere. It was played everywhere. Yeah. Even rock stations would play it because they're still thinking, well, it's the white rabbit people. The Starship you know? was one of the, I think it was the third cassette tape that I bought when I first, I, I saved up my lawn mowing money and I bought uh, Beastie Boys License to Ill alongside with um, Whitney Houston's um, I Want to Dance with Somebody album. Um, so both of those at the same time. So I felt a little like Warren in that sense. Um, and then uh, Starship, I, um, uh, the, the, what album was that? Uh, anyway, it was the one with We Built This City. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It was called um, in the hoopla. That's what it was called. I can so, just imagine the person ringing you up with that collection of those that collection of three albums. I'm getting like Jack oh no, the Black first Black. the first two I bought by themselves. It was Beastie Boys and Whitney Houston, um, and then I you know went back to Sam the Record Man or whatever it was at the time and picked up um, uh, the Starship album. Okay, uh, that was that All was right. a total other time. But yeah, you would have definitely seen a very confused teenager coming in to pick that stuff up. Teenagers confused? No, oh, it doesn't. Yeah, Not yet, doesn't I, I prefer the term eclectic, ah, which is like basically translates to too broke to be eccentric. I can identify yeah. with that with that part now. Either that or <laughs> either that or trophy husband, participation trophy husband. Yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> all good. Lightly bronzed. <laughs> I like that. Well, maybe I should be yeah, legally bronzed. <laughs> it's a great movie title. I wonder where you came up with that. I don't know. I, it's a stroke of genius, though. I'd run with it. I very well might. <laughs> I very well might. So, oh, you hear some feedback there? No, we're good. We're good. Okay, so just on my end. Anyway. So with this particular song, again, I hated it then, I hate it now. I we haven't even touched on the video with the dancing Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Tell me that when we Where did he go? Brad or Abe Lincoln? 
Brad will be back. Abe Lincoln, unfortunately, <laughs> didn't leave us. Uh, they, they railed on the video, as they should, but it got a lot of airplay. And Brad brought up a very good point, because the person who, what the person who did the DJ voice was an executive. At, I brought this uh, point up. Oh, you brought that up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't take credit for that one. I knew it, but <laughs> Andrea brought it up. <laughs> right, I apologize. And to be right. fair, people can't tell us apart. So, it's you know, true. Yeah, we're very similar. Mm -hmm. No, um sorry my my internet it keeps lagging so i'm i'm having issues with keeping up with the conversation but oh, yes okay. um it is not surprising it got airplay when they literally shoved an mtv dj unnecessarily into the middle of it not even um, a dj or a vj he was no, he was, he an, was exec. an exec yeah yeah so i mean so like, of he, he course a lot he's more gonna power. feed the ego and put his stuff into rotation yeah and the video itself is awful, especially when they're all looking at the statue, the Lincoln Memorial. I don't know what Abraham Lincoln ever had to do with rock and roll. Oh, that's right. Nothing. Uh, he was pretty rock and roll for his day. I, I think there were a lot of rocks around in his day. There might have been a and, lot of rocks. In his and day. the wheel was rolling. Uh, he, he, he did tell everyone to party on, dude, in San Dimas in 1988. Well, that was a famous quote of Abraham Lincoln. Yes, Wait, it was. This hadn't yes. happened yet, so they didn't know. <laughs> uh -huh. Be excellent to each other. I should have wore that T-shirt, which I do have. Nice. Instead, I've got my. But yeah, ultimately, if we're going to ask how the happen. hell did this go number one, I think the answer is pretty obvious. Um, it was engineered to. It, this was an overproduced pop song. It was, um, there was a little favor done to an MTV exec, which of course got it in a rotation. Big favor. Yeah. And it was catchy. Also, like, I didn't I, know about, um, I, I didn't know about uh, uh, Jefferson Airplane or uh, anything like that before I heard Starship. And then through Starship, I learned about them. But going back to that MTV exec, I'm pretty sure also he hired Grace, Grace's son to work at MTV as a DJ or uh -huh. VJ. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, maybe. So there's some like, nepotism kept, going on there. Maybe that's why Grace kept her mouth shut. Okay. Maybe. Been. But I mean, the fact is, it's it's got pop song written on it, it's got chart topper written on it. And it did. It worked. You, you had the synth pop sound of the 80s. You had a great uh, vocalist on the on the track. I mean, Grace Slick is a vocalist par excellence. Yeah, and and so, we're giving no love to Mickey Thomas, who kind of, he, who was the, the male lead in that and was the lead in, in Jane and some of the other songs that... Uh, yeah, and he's got a great voice as well. Yeah, I mean, he's not one of my favorite personalities ever. I'd never go to... Starship featuring Mickey Thomas, which I think stole tours, but I will not take away from his voice. I, I actually, in the research in this, I did not know that he was sort of like back up on Elvin Bishop's uh, Fooled Around and Fell in Love in 76. And that chorus part is awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know. I'll, I'll, so it's got a lot of earmarks of what should be a, a hit song. And whether we like it or not, I mean, we can have the debate on personal taste back and forth for ages because, you know, I, I like my 80s stuff. You like your disco stuff. I like um, my 80s stuff too. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying I've got a special, really warm place in my cold, dead heart for that kind of stuff, like the 80s hair bands and the 80s synth pop and that kind of stuff. I, I really like it, but mm. personal taste aside, the majority decided this was a worthwhile song and rocketed it to number one. Yeah, well, that majority is wrong. So basically, if somebody says to crawl back up in a crevice, it's really only me. Just say, Kirk, go crawl up back in a crevice. Andrea, <laughs> halfway through, Brad can be crevice free, which is not usually how his Friday nights go. That's how my ass <laughs> has been described. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get out of this one. Uh, <laughs> Andrea. What do you, what have you picked for next week? Well, I think that we are going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and take a look at my life. And realize there's nothing left. Another good song, okay. <laughs> We're gonna do some Coolio. Nice. This song 
has lots to say about it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Do I share a story about a French girl? Probably not. Why wouldn't Probably you? not. <laughs> How about you share it privately and then we can decide if it's uh, appropriate to share publicly. Yeah, actually, I've just realized I've already shared that privately. Just I haven't got to why. Anyway, uh, <laughs> on that note, hey, guys. On that note, you... next week, we're going to talk about Gangster's Paradise. So, Kirk, I heard you wrote a book. I wrote you a did book. not. I did. I did. You did? did? Yeah. It's I didn't even know you could read. <laughs> I didn't say that I read a book, read it. I just said I wrote it. <laughs> you know what they say about monkeys on typewriters well this monkey right here uh i wrote a book Ooh. about the late great chavo guerrero senior i helped him write his uh, autobiography you can get that on amazon chavo guerrero instant classic and he was a great man miss you chavo uh i do a bunch of other shows andrea is going to be a guest star at some point in time before she goes on holiday on the, really what is the sister show to this how the hell did this, how, no, this crap was on national television. Sorry, I have a lot of shows. They're all with me. I gotta work on that. I don't know, what am I gonna do? If you don't like Kirk, just tune out now. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't get enough Kirk, which I can't speak or, for the rest of the watchers here, but I can't. If, if you don't like Kirk, just hate watch. Just watch it and get really angry and then send us all the hate mail. Oh, we haven't gotten hate mail in a long time. Well, no, you can speak for yourself on that one. Uh, <laughs> Barry White did say, my darling, I can't get enough Kirk Buckner. Yeah. I think he said that. No. No? Okay. Continue on. Anyway. Chris We're Bourdain, moving right along. Yeah. Well, Chris Bourdain and I, we do a regular show where we look at weird programs that got, that was on national television. Andrew is going to guest star. When we look at the 1989 Oscars, there were no slapping, but Rob Lowe should have been. True story. Uh, <laughs> weekly, there is also the Hall of Fame show with Evan Nolan and myself. The classic sports review is back. And we looked at the first ever USFL game. Uh, I've lined up a special guest for our next episode on that. So I'm really pumped for that. With that, wherever you are, wherever you may be, stay safe, everyone. Say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie.